I'm very excited to say that I have Gustav on the show this afternoon. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us around uh, New York, I guess you are at the moment. Yes, indeed. New yeah. York. Yeah, that's good. And we've been uh, playing a couple of your singles recently, Design uh, and Book as well, was a single of the week uh, on my radio show. And we're very excited about the release of the record, which I'm sure you are too. We'd like to know more about the record, if you wouldn't mind telling us, um, you know, where it was recorded, how it was recorded, a bit of the process, if someone wouldn't mind jumping in. Sure. Um, we'll, we recorded it with, uh, it was produced with our friend Carlos um, uh, Hernandez, yes, and uh, yeah, it was, it was just a, a lovely occasion. We all just got together, we recorded, I, I think we just recorded all the backing tracks together in like a couple days and then we did a couple days of just overdubs, uh, adding whatever instruments and percussion we saw fit and then uh, Lydia and Carlos really went, went to work on it and really finished it off nicely. Um, the wrapping paper on it was-, yeah, was you're, uh, you're, you're listing like four days in the studio right now. And I was like, oh, there's many more than that. Than I, that. No, yeah, yeah, no, uh, that, exactly. Yeah, um, it was recorded at the Honey Jar in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, with Carlos Hernandez, he's great. He's done a lot of awesome records. He's in this band, Ava Luna. He just did his own solo project, Carlos Truly. Record comes out October 1st on Royal Mountain Records. Thank you, yeah. sir. Exciting. I just and, noticed Lydia yeah. and I are matching. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, the Royal magic Mountain period. Records. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, Tar and, Tar and Frankie are matching. I'm, I'm just alone. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to ask about the, uh, the recording process, because although I haven't seen you guys live, I've watched lots of footage of you guys, and I'm... Um, I'm surmising from from maybe like the influences of which you take your music that maybe when you play live, there's a little bit of freedom uh, as towards where the tracks may go live. Was that, you know, you, I'd imagine some of the tracks you'll have had for a while and well road tested uh, live, but how did you put the parameters on on the track to decide like, you know, when you went into the studio that this is the kind of, we need to keep it to like three minutes or whatever. And then we put the, the bells and whistles on it. Well, I think there's always been um, sort of like, you know, the hot, hot water version of songs. So like when you're on stage, you're like, all right, we got to get out of here. Like we know sort of we're like comedians, but we're musicians sort of like, you know, you know what your nice tight five is. And then what's great about playing live is that, I mean, it's all about just trying to be honest and authentic to what's happening in the room in that moment. And I think the band has been really good at giving everyone sort of the freedom to try and play with and honor that experience. Um, and I, I just, for me personally, I think I, as a performer, I'm very uh, based on feeling. So if like we're playing a song to a live audience and I feel like it feels inauthentic between like us and the crowd, it's like, that's usually when the band knows it's, it's, it's time to vamp for a little bit to just try and like, you know, bring everything up to a simmer and, and, and get cooking in the right way. But on a record, you know, it's a completely different experience. So I think um, a lot of that, and it's and it's a different type of catering that you have to do. So I think what it was interesting to us to sort of go in and capture what we've been doing for um, a couple of years, and then you uh, do that type of process after you've sort of got the lightning in a bottle and then you go, okay, where is this need to grow and like where should we pull back and it's funny there's some stuff you do live that doesn't necessarily translate to a record so it's just kind of balancing those two things out yeah yeah absolutely and would you say you know yourselves uh, since recording I, when was this actually recorded how long ago was it recorded this was yeah. no, november of last september year. september 20, 2020 yeah, and I'm guessing with the pandemic, I'm not sure how what's how it is now in New York, but over here in the UK, there's been pretty much no gigs at all up until like a fortnight, ago, maybe two weeks ago when festivals were allowed to happen. And so I, I guess, did that put a creative stop on things or were you still able to get together and do some writing? Well, I think we had done a lot of playing live before yeah. 
the government said we weren't allowed to anymore. <laughs> um, so I, if anything, we we definitely needed, and I, uh, we not that we we didn't, no one needed anything. No, uh, but I think that not being able to play live actually helped us sort of focus and concentrate on like what we actually needed to do to sort of translate what it is we do to a recorded record. And I think we're all busy lives. Like everyone's super talented and had a lot of bands and stuff that they wanted to do too. So like us being able to get together was kind of a rare thing that like if we were still playing shows, I just don't necessarily know if we would have had the same amount of time to really kind of sit down and, and focus because people would just keep offering. I mean, we'd probably just, we couldn't, we can't help ourselves. We love the stage. We'd probably just be playing a lot. And like, you know, the record would get pushed back and pushed back. And so, you know, well, it was a, it was a tough, tough year. Um, it was uh, uh, something to focus on that needed to be focused on, so. Yeah, that's cool. And, and a good, you know, maybe like mark of where the band were at at that moment and obviously once the record's born I guess then you kind of as creative people you're looking to the the next bit of expression I guess like that but however gigs are back and you you got a lot of gigs coming up as well haven't you yeah <laughs> and playing with the likes of idols and, and pillow queens uh, as well I mean wh how was it you came about making friends with idols and ended up on that tour it's a dream come true. They've been on the vision board for a while. So <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, teen, teen. Uh, Tara's played the UK a lot before. I've only gone over a little bit. So I'm I'm really excited just to get to know more more people um, across the pond, as we say. Well, and there's going to be a lot of people at those idol shows. They're probably like the biggest British band at the moment, you know, in terms of like, the size of the venues they do over here, their headline of festivals, that kind of thing. But you know, the best thing about idols is they're just the nicest people. They are the nicest people. That's what everyone's saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to meet them. Yeah, they're so they're so right on. You know, they they are the the they're, they're, you know they're using their platform for good, which is great to see. You know, they've got good good roots and the the proper the proper nice people as well. So you'll be in, in good company with those, I guess, as well. Uh, and, and you're playing some shows in, in Europe uh, as well. Is that the first time uh, as a band you've been in, in Europe? Yes, yeah. yes, it is, yeah. Which cities yeah, are you looking forward to, to visiting? Luxembourg seems cool. I don't know, I've never been there or to Belgium. We're going to Belgium, right? Somewhere in Belgium. Yeah, Luxembourg is its own little tiny country. I, I know, think. Right? Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm just fascinated because it's so small. <laughs> yeah, I can't, believe, I can't believe it's on the around. The, the <laughs> thing about the Europe is, as well, when you're traveling around, you'll pass borders and you know you'll go through different countries all the time, and it's it's so surprising how different they all are considering they're all next to each other it's it's amazing at least they all have the same currency now it used to be when i was a when i was a small child you'd have to have a different currency for every single country but i know i guess it has its pros and cons um so that's very exciting that you're going to be do, coming over and doing that and the the record of course as well coming out via royal mountain was that a good fit for you guys as well as a, as the label to put you the record out yeah. Um, yeah, they've they've been so excellent and just and um, very personal. Yeah, very personal and and, and just you know uh, very much letting us you know be ourselves and and supporting that and and yeah that that that's just been the most important thing is just having that support network and um, they're super encouraging and just yeah very organized which is always nice. <laughs> No, that's um, good. You want yeah. your, your, yeah, your, your, your musical parents, I guess, are your record label, and you need them to be yeah, organized. Exactly. And keep your stuff <laughs> together and all that kind of thing. Guys, yeah. um, I, I appreciate you taking the time out and speaking to me. I know it's early morning over there in, in the US, so I really appreciate <laughs> sorry, it. My little baby bird eyes, I feel like. <laughs> so I'm sorry. You've gotten, you got, you got, I was a minute late. That bummed me out. That made me sad, but I'm so awake now. So no, this is good practice for touring because you're gonna have some like you know lobby calls at ridiculous times to make all the different venues you play. And I'm so excited about the record. Um, I've loved what I've heard so far. So far. So thanks so much for giving us the a great bit of music. Thanks. thanks so happy you enjoy it. Yeah. Oh boy. 
That's great. What a relief. Honestly, you never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who, who knows? It's like we like it, but. Well, you know, you, you obviously have good taste because if you like it, ultimately, you know, it must be good because you must have good taste yourselves for it to appeal to, you know, like minded people all over the world, which is pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, so, we're so happy that that's resonating with folks. That, that, that does mean a lot. Yeah, I think what I don't know, some people call it imposter syndrome. I think of what the emperor's new clothes where like he's just walking through the town naked and do you, <laughs> do you know, do that story. And so I keep being like, are we naked? Are we wearing clothing? I don't know. <laughs> and so it's nice that the whole world is just like clothes, clothes, clothes. <laughs> yeah, we have clothes on. Yeah. Great. 